whether as a violist, violinist, composer, arranger, teaching artist, professor, or writer, David Wallace brings his prodigious talents to not only lead ensembles and institutions, but also to push the boundaries of classification and genre. Indeed, David is truly a model of the versatile and entrepreneurial 21st century musician. As a teaching artist, David was trained at Juilliard as a Morse Fellow, at the Lincoln Center Institute, and through teaching artist programs of the New York Philharmonic. David has inspired a generation of students from inner city elementary school children to postgraduate fellows of Carnegie Hall's ensemble ACJW and the New World Symphony. In addition to his decade on the faculty of Juilliard, he's taught lessons and workshops on improvisation, composition, and educational outreach. In 2007, David made a monumental impact in the field of audience engagement when he published his book, Reaching Out, A Musician's Guide to Interactive Performance which built on his many years of consulting and designing concerts for institutions such as the Tanglewood Music Festival and the Los Angeles Philharmonic. Reaching Out serves as one of the mentor texts of Longy's own teaching artist program. This season, Boston team scored another home run as David relocated from New York City to begin his post as chair of the string department at Berklee College of Music where he leads new initiatives and in creativity and innovation. Without a doubt, David is a paradigm of Longy's motto, perform, teach, think. Please join me in welcoming David Wallace. Thank you, Karen, and thank you, everyone. It's good to see so many faces I've seen before wearing different hats today, and congratulations. I have to admit, I've spoken before more audiences, classrooms, and councils than I can count, but today marks my commencement speech debut. And as I was thinking about what to say, I was flashing back to one of my own graduations 20 years ago this month. The speaker was a world-renowned pianist and conductor. He took the podium, reached up under his mortar board, scratched his forehead, and said, on the taxi on the way over here, I was thinking about what to tell you and his speech slowly and painfully meandered for a long time. And I started thinking about my student loans. <laughs> this guy was not a Longy graduate. And looking back, I'm much more sympathetic because you see, over the past month, I've ridden in a lot of taxis, sometimes through Cambridge. And at the end of every ride, I was scratching my head and saying, what on earth am I going to tell Longy's graduating class of 2015? I mean, as you know, you are not run-of-the-mill conservatory graduates because Longy is not a run-of-the-mill conservatory. For crying out loud, you are fluent in clefts that most professional musicians don't even know exist. <laughs> As was already mentioned, your reputation precedes you. Because you invest so much time in in-depth study of scores, in musicianship, in ear training, and in self-awareness, you have a reputation for delivering performances and lessons that are more mindful, more musical, and more meaningful than a typical performance. And not only that, if you haven't already proven that you know what you need to know in order to have a long and successful life in music, as you've heard in Carly's field research for crying out loud, 110 and a half inches of snow could not deter you from reaching your goals this year, and you are graduating, so congratulations. I do want to encourage you 
to set goals. Recently, I was doing some house cleaning and came across this paper and lots of scribblings. Um, and on this side, there is, in all capital letters, now, and then there's a line pointing to future. And all along that, and by the way, this was on my bulletin board for a number of years right after I was at the juncture where you are. And uh, along the way, there are different thoughts ranging from short-range goals, teach at a chamber music festival some summer, to more permanent ones, land a university faculty position, to others that were a little more general and yet to be materialized, but I knew there were things I wanted to do. Write a book about music. And somehow just having that crystallized and on my periphery every day when I sat at my desk was booking a concert or practicing or looking up, I was reminded I had specific stuff I wanted to do. And the, the things on that list fell into place much more quickly than they would have had I just let my life meander. However, I'd also say that you can plan everything, you can set goals, but in all honesty, the best stuff in my life and career have simply come about by being ready, by being open to new possibilities, and also by listening to what the world needs from me. When I first majored in music, all I wanted to be was a great violin teacher. And as my life and education progressed, I sort of saw that wasn't what the world really needed me to be doing. And suddenly I found one door would open, another door would open. I was doing stuff that I had never thought I would be doing. I had never heard of teaching artistry. I had never heard of free jazz. I certainly never dreamed I would be mentoring over a hundred kids here and in Korea and in Japan to compose chamber works and symphonic works for New York Philharmonic musicians, let alone be asked to compose or arrange things for them themselves. But a lot of it came about just by making the most of every opportunity, making the most of every collaboration, showing up on time, being responsible, doing my best, giving my all to everything. And I can tell you, the best opportunities came as a direct result from teaching artist work and community engagement. I am convinced that that is the path to arriving at the best arts organizations, working and collaborating with some of the best musicians, and also sharing your music in situations that provide the most meaning and make the most difference. The thing about teaching artistry is that it compels us to dig deeper into our art form because you cannot convey the greatness of complex music without really figuring out what's great about it and how to communicate that. And that changes your internal practice conversation because your time is not invested asking, how can I play this without making mistakes? And more invested in what is great about this work? How does it hold together? And how can I communicate that way so that people can hear the things in it that I and my colleagues hear in it? And so what I'd like to do is to really encourage you not to self-identify as gifted musicians. Without question, you have tremendous gifts, but rather I would want you to think of yourselves and your lives and your careers as being giving musicians. Because here you see, within the term gifted musician, that can be alienating and confining because the presumption is you are one of a rare breed that has rare gifts that you have either had naturally or developed that few people will attain, and that cloisters us. However, if you are a giving gifted musician, then you take those very rare gifts and you use them to draw other people into deep, rich, life-changing, transformative, and artistic experiences. And that is something that Longi has invested deeply in, so that you have not only the musical skills, but the empathetic skills and the communicative skills, so that you will never be scratching your heads when you are standing in front of one of your audiences asked to communicate. 20 years ago, the conversation around arts education and the arts was very different. It's, we were still clinging to a presumption that quote unquote serious music by nature is far superior 
a commodity to anything popular enough to sell millions of copies, and consequently gifted musicians still pursued their arts purely for its own sake without regard for what relevance that might have to a broader public. Thankfully, as you know, our field has drastically evolved, but as leaders, you play extraordinarily significant roles in shaping its future. As giving and gifted musicians, you will reach out, not because the media is trying to place you and your profession on an endangered species list, but because you are consummate artists who are passionate about sharing your art. You will create and participate in programs like El Sistema because you understand and believe in the transformative and community building power of music and ensembles. And as giving and gifted musicians, you will advance the arts conversation by moving the discussion always back towards the empathetic realm of beauty, personal transformation, social justice, and cultural diplomacy. Are you following how conductor Marin Alsop and the Baltimore Symphony musicians are responding to the recent turmoil in their hometown? Within a very short time of the worst looting, riots, and protests, the orchestra announced a free public concert outside their hall, posting on Facebook, it seems we could all use a little music in our lives right about now. And this was the beginning of a campaign they launched and they're now calling it hashtag BSO Peace. The musicians are taking to the streets, to churches, to parks, to public gatherings, giving free concerts of their own volition. The musicians know that their city does not need token gestures from cultural elitists. It does need music's expressive, healing, and unifying powers. Their community does need cultural assurance that every life matters and deserves dignity. Your music matters. Your teaching matters. Every note of it, every minute of it. And you will never consciously know just how much influence your work will have on the world and on the lives around you. But that's how it works when you're a giver. You don't worry about how much you matter. You worry about how much everybody else matters and what you can do for them. The Baltimore Symphony musicians have been championing a Leonard Bernstein quote as the basis of their campaign. And this is what Bernstein said. This will be our reply to violence, to make music more intensely, more beautifully, more devotedly than ever before. As giving musicians, let's affirm that reply, but by all means, Let's not reserve that kind of intensity, beauty, and devotion for violence alone. Let's tap that passion each day because that is our gift to humanity. Godspeed for the journey. Hearty congratulations to you all for all you've accomplished to date and all you shall accomplish in your future. Thank you and bravo.